First of all, thank you, Howard. And I would like to thank Beacon and the Planning Committee for the privilege of summarizing the insights of such passionate educators, clinicians, and policymakers. Um, it's also difficult to do because I told several people today that please excuse my typing. I'm trying to get all the notes from everything that everybody said, and that was virtually impossible. But as I listened today, I start excuse me, I started to identify words that portrayed the theme of today's summit. So I doodled words throughout the day and some patterns. And this slide is a very, very broad and very crude uh, rendition of what I hope that we all heard during the summit. First of all, I would like to thank you, Sherry and Dr. Matthews, for quantifying, quantifying the reason that we are here today. Sherry, of course, provided us with a comprehensive State of the Union regarding Nebraska's nursing shortage. So we're gonna to get to this little middle area here. And our projected shortage across the straight state. And Sherry, I do apologize. I did not get all of your numbers down. They were so comprehensive and almost so overwhelming to me. Um, Dr. Matthews informed us that only 4% of RNs go into psych. I'm sure that you began to extrapolate these data and determine that this may mean that lesser nurses actually pursue the advanced degree for the APRNs that we, are, that we need to provide care to our community. I want to thank Dr. Stewart for indicating that quantity is not enough. We need to build a psychiatric nursing workforce with new skills to negotiate this healthcare environment. And Sherry also brought that up as the day continued, so did Joe, so did several other people in this room. One of the things I put on here that I, I didn't hear the word other than through Senator Vargas in a way was, I need you to find a futurist, find a forecaster. This morning's speakers, Bridget in some ways took us back to the past and brought us to the present in some ways of where she was when she was being educated. So how did we teach? What did we teach to? And where we are today. Dr. Stewart in some ways was our futurist today. She focused a great deal on, challenge, on, um, on the challenges faced, um, that we face and challenged us to strategically Note she said that word several times, strategically, see both the healthcare world and the education world in a new light. They were eloquent in their communication that care is no longer compartmentalized to acute care or hospital settings. It's occurring in non-traditional settings. It's occurring in collaborative environments. So there, those of you in service, we speak of integrative care. We speak of collaborative care. Use Dr. Stewart's model of coordinated care. Remember the continuum she showed of coordinated, co-located, and integrated care. Could we use that as our barometer in the state of Nebraska to gauge where we are? When we talk, I really began to realize that what we need to look at is collaborative care, requires collaborative teaching, requires collaborative pol policy making. I think that's what we heard throughout today. And so I put us all around that little table and I put professional organizations with that. I should put probably professional slash government. Um, but I once told Nick, I'm kind of apolitical in some ways and I, it scares me to say the word government. <laughs> but put us all around that table and in so, the theme that came out in some way was, how can we partner? How can we collaborate as educators and service partners to support collaborative care, to support integrative care, especially for our APNs who may be geographically isolated? How do we use technology? Can we collaborate on innovative, creative approaches to securing funds for innovative ideas. We heard um, the individual at the very, very late in today say, how can small agencies, how can we work together to do that? We figured out today that this, of course, requires a different lens for education. We must be collaborative in our approach. Where are we teaching? We heard that today. Where do we place our undergraduate and graduate students? This is going to require a great deal of collaboration and partnership. Discussion between partners, our service partners, our education. We can't just sit back and say in education, we know where they should go, or in service saying, well, you know, we need to work that together. 
What are we teaching them? As Dr. Stewart pointed out, we must remain true to who we are. Everyone, I think, pointed that out today. And the essence of what we are about as psych nurses. But we also must prepare them for how to use what is our essence in a dynamic, unpredictable psych healthcare environment. For instance, in graduate programs, did you hear Tina at the end? We, we need to teach business acumen. We need to teach policy. Um, Dr. Hofek, the DNP, they become policy analysts. They become um, entrepreneurs. They become all of that. Um, at the undergraduate level, we no longer can just teach psych. We have to teach psych in a care management environment. We have to teach screening. We have to teach the fundamentals, but we have to look at how we are teaching. How often did that come across today? The old ways just don't work, as Bridget says. You know, she said, here's the way we were taught. Where are we now? How are we using technology? How are we using it for simulation, regardless of how we, how we define it? What about apps? How are we supervising students that are geographically disparate from our campuses? How are we teaching collaboratively? How are we teaching IPE, interprofessional education, via technology? Um, how are we using our professional organization site tools to help teach and to support the knowledge we need? Look at something that's occurred between last year and this year in terms of the great progress made at the undergraduate level with using DEUs. And they say that we're recruiting, but there, there seems to be a, almost a better feel for the education of that student. Who are the psych faculty that are being prepared? Who can teach? Um, is it just nurses? Who teaches epidemiology? Does it have to be a nurse? Who teaches the business to the graduate students? Does it have to be a nurse? That's kind of what I think we heard today. This requires collaboration with other professions. And as uh, Dr. Laframboy pointed out today, discussion with the collaboration with our state boards. Look at policy makers again up there. Policy makers, our state board is a policy maker. They dictate our regulations. Notice the example she gave of how they worked to make a change. How are we doing that with our APRNs? Are we looking at our scope of practice? Are we practicing to the maximum abilities that we can do that? The where, what, how, and who all require that strong collaboration, that strong engagement, that strong partnering and dialoguing. We must think both strategically and we must think operationally. So we have to have the people with, at the table who have vision, who have forecasts. I'm not always the best forecaster. I can operationalize something, though. You know, so we need both at that table. You may wonder, with the above, how Senator Vargas' presentation comes in. He didn't speak to mental health, per se. He spoke of collaboration and engagement. He said, when planning state appropriations, we have to work with agencies and our roles, both individually and together, in informing our legislative bodies. What is that telling us in this room? How do we, as educators and service partners, work together and engage to talk with our policymakers to advance our educational and care agendas, for the mentally, care agendas for the mentally ill? How do we collaborate? How do we work together with them for the needed data? And then Dr. Hofek brought up a great deal about research today. What data are we collecting? Into, not just evidence-based practice, but what data are we collecting? You know, uh, Sherry talked a great deal. She collects a great deal of data, it appears. Um, what data are we collecting and how are we sharing that data? That is what I think Senator Vargas tried to bring up today. So I want to kind of look at words did, that you heard today. What did you see in this room? You saw passion. You saw engagement. You saw innovation. You saw futurism. You saw forecasting. You saw people around a table. And that's what I think we're seeking. So I want to end with um, a quote by Shannon Alder. She's an inspirational author. Never give up on someone with mental illness. I think we all heard in this room today. None of you in this room give up on mental illness or you wouldn't you, you know, you wouldn't even be here. When I is replaced by we, illness becomes wellness. So today I think the theme was, again, 
pulling together, partnering, and doing what Dr. Bonshaw said at one point. What's your goal? Are you all coming out with a goal today? And does that goal involve collaboration? And does that goal involve partnership? And sometimes taking that step forward when you don't want to and saying, I'm going to go talk to those people, or I'm going to do something to even to move one step forward. I think that's what we heard today. So again, I want to thank Beacon for allowing me the pleasure to really listen and to help summarize, I hope, today what, what you've all heard. Thank you.